Hi everybody, and welcome to What Makes Funny. I'm Andy Wassef, and today we're going to be talking about the dumb character. Typically it's our favorite among all the sitcom characters, or it might be our favorite. Who doesn't have more of a fondness for Rose Nyland on The Golden Girls, or Joey Tribbiani on Friends, or the original dingbat, Vera, on Alice? You want a funny joke line? Just give them something stupid to say, right? Well, there's actually a lot more involved with the this character, and if you're going to write them well, there are a few things that uh, you need to keep in mind. So, without any further goodbye in French, let's get to it. This is me trying to relax on the plane. This is upright, recline. <laughs> Guys, why aren't the brakes working? Because I cut the brakes! Wild car, bitches! Yeah! What? 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 First thing, stop calling this character dumb. Well, yeah, I know I did it in the intro, but you see, I was using creative... What, what I was trying to do was... I mean, it wasn't meant to be... Why don't you worry about yourself for a change, huh? But seriously, the character isn't actually dumb, but rather innocent. They actually have great skill and knowledge in particular areas. Uh, just not the areas that an audience or the surrounding characters would consider common sense. Knowing that will help you construct this character better. And then you begin to uh, draw the background, the backstory. How and why are the, is this character innocent? And to that end, there are actually three shades to the innocent character that are all just a little bit different from one another. They can be innocent because they're foreign, or foreign to where the show takes place. You've got your Balki Bartokomus, that's from Mipos, Woody Boyd from Hanover, Indiana, Kenneth, Rose Nyland, St. Olaf, Minnesota, all these places that we all don't know. So to them, uh, they're normal. We're the weird ones. Uh, then you have someone like Manuel on Faulty Towers, who's a Spaniard living in England and doesn't understand the language very well. Every other word is que. Kenneth, a word? Balloon! When I was your age, I was putting myself through college in Boston, paddling swan boats for the tourists. Is that a euphemism for some kind of sex worker? Kenneth, why did you bet that terrible hand? Why? Because I believe that life is for the living. I believe in taking risks and biting off more than you can chew. And also, people were yelling, and I got confused about the rules. Who is it? It's Kenneth from the NBC Page program. I'm here for a pickup from Kieran Dang. Oh, hello, gentlemen. Oh, thank goodness, air conditioning. Ooh, what does that tattoo mean? When I get nervous, I ask a lot of questions. Do y'all have a bathroom I could use? Y'all have long fingernails. Now, do y'all rent this space or do you own it? Hey, that's a funny looking fish. What is that, like a grapefruit knife? I love how the light catches it like diamonds. Kenneth, it is diamonds. Ah, hi, Mr. Donaghy. Can I help you with something? You are a puzzle, Kenneth Allen. And I'm going to solve you. Yes, I am. All our children were conceived on special St. Olaf holidays. Adam was conceived on the day of the Princess Pig when they had the pig crowning. <laughs> And Janella was conceived on Hay Day. That's the day we St. Olafians celebrate hay. <laughs> 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 
Rose, it's not that funny. <laughs> I know. I think I better keep the lid on this paint thinner. <laughs> yes, but I'm not one to blow my own Vertuvenflugen. Please forgive me. It wasn't my fault. My cousins have been marrying each other for generations. <laughs> it's not that easy to make new friends. It sure wasn't for the first Eskimo family that moved to St. Olaf. <laughs> Especially after they sawed a hole and went salmon fishing in the middle of the local ice skating rink. And then there was the Halloween they gave all the kids whale blubber. And then there was the time they borrowed every ice tray in town to build an addition over their garage. What was the point, Rose? I guess after the baby came, they needed more room. It's like that old Scandinavian saying, you can let two angry mackerel fight it out in a purse, but don't ever plan on carrying that purse to a formal affair. <laughs> well, it loses a little in the translation. We're city folk, and they're not. The writers can even create an entire world of St. Olaf that we'll never see but every week, Rose is able to disseminate little pieces of information that we don't know is, is not true. It might be. I've never been there. But as much as the characters are seem dumb to us, you know, again, they're not part of our world, they actually are not dumb at all. But you can play on the fact that they seem dumb. <sighs> What's the matter? What... I don't get the far side. Woody, Woody, hand it over here. Come on, let's have a look. Okay, Wood. Now, you see here in the first panel, the cows are standing on their hind legs, right? The second panel, when the car goes by, they're acting like normal cows. See, the idea here is, Wood, that, uh, you know, <laughs> Cows only act like cows when, when we're around. Other times they act like people. You know, does that, does that help you clear it up a little bit for you? Just, man, I don't get the far side in my newspaper at home, but thanks for treating me like a one-year-old. Another type will allow you similar jokes, but come at it from a different starting point. These characters are diminished in some way whether it be by because of drugs or old age, making their mind a little squirrely. Take Coach, for example, from Cheers. He was hitting the head with a baseball too many times, and that is how he ended up where his intellectual capacity is today. The question is, if a tree falls in the woods and if there's nobody there to hear it, does it make a sound? Well, if there's nobody there, I mean, how do you know it fell? <laughs> Uh, well, Coach, we kind of we assumed that it fell, you know. Yeah, but you don't know. All right, okay, Coach. Uh, I went into the woods yesterday and uh, saw the tree laying there on the ground. Well, a bunch of beavers could have chewed at it and then gently lowered it to the ground, Cliff. Uh, well, you, you got me there on that one, Coach. How about another beer, huh? I'm telling you, you surprised me, Cliff. You're not prepared at all tonight. You know what, Coach? You never take a day off. No, Thursday's my day off. You work every Thursday. Yeah, but I go a little slow, you know. Well, I, Diane Chambers, bred and educated to walk with kings, once offered a full scholarship at the Sorbonne, have allowed myself to become attracted to a six-foot, three-inch bubblegum card. Well, gee, I think I can help you with the Sorbonnes, Diane, but... Uh... <laughs> Soda here. Yeah, I tell you, I mean, things gonna be a lot more the way they used to be around here than than they ever were. Glad to hear you say <laughs> that, Sam. You're gonna be the better man for it. Yeah, hey, coach, you're not buying this, are you? Buying it, Carla. I'm not even following you. <laughs> Sam, you're out of this room. <laughs> coach, we were gonna kiss. We were. <laughs> You mind if I do these first? <laughs> You'll notice plays on words are a recurring theme. They're a great go-to. 
whether it's idioms, taking it literally, or not understanding the words going with the actual pronunciation of Sorbonne. Uh, <laughs> but uh, something like, I think the pinnacle is this scene from Taxi, which is a classic scene, and Jim, who's taken one too many drugs in his days, uh, has trouble at the driver's test. What does a yellow light mean? Slow down. Okay. What? goes on for about 40 seconds and it continues to get funnier the slower he gets even though you know uh, what he's about to do uh, I love how he looks down at, to see yellow which he'd forgotten uh, <laughs> but you can see that these types are very similar to the uh, first types though this gives you more ground to till for material um, it's they both come from the minds of uh, both Jim and coach from uh, the Charles Brothers and James Burroughs, Taxi and Cheers. And it's inspiring to see that they didn't just cop out and say, let's just create a character who's a step behind, which brings us to our third character, third type. You know how dogs age like seven years for every year? You know, when you say, well, they're two, but really they kind of are at 14. That's kind of like these characters. They're, you know, Kelly Bundy, Joey Tribbiani, Vinnie Barbarino, Bull Shannon on Night Court. Uh, they're in their 20s and 30s, but really they're thinking at a third grade level. Um, not dumb, just a little step behind. Look what they want me to wear in my next Verminator commercial. Yeah! Daddy, I'm afraid if I keep doing this, people are going to think that I'm all body and no... Mind? No, I don't mind. Go ahead. <laughs> Come on, Daddy. I want to be a model. Hey, maybe I can get one of those neat jobs standing in a store window. <laughs> there is one slight problem. See, if, if you take a gallon of knowledge and pour it into a shot glass of a brain, you're going to spill some. In other words, certain basic information had to be sacrificed. Like what? What was that? I like it. <laughs> Are you kidding? What's not to like? Custard? Good. Jam? Good. Meat? Good. Just because he got a bigger boat, he thinks he can take up the whole river. Get out of the way, jackass! <laughs> Who names that boat Coast Guard, anyway? That is the Coast Guard. What are they doing out here? The coast is all the way over there. Full name. Clifford Burnett. Date of birth? November 16th, 1968. Age? <laughs> Can't you figure that out based on my date of birth? I'm a doctor, Cliff, not a mathematician. It's important to give these characters, the dumb characters, jobs that it makes sense that they would do or be able to do. You don't want to put them in a corporate world. Um, and Joey, he's an actor. He's not a doctor. He's an actor playing a doctor, and that creates problems. Uh, Kelly is basically doing whatever she can with her body. Uh, Vinnie Barbarino is a remedial high school student. Um, Bull Shannon is a bailiff. Charlie Kelly works in a bar. But once you determine that, then you kind of play with how they're dumb. Kelly, it's she can only uh, absorb so many facts before other facts uh, squeeze out of her tiny little head. And um, Joey is more caveman-like. And Bull is kind of a, he can be a bully. These are things that they're good at, uh, as well as what their jobs are. And what they're good at, with Kelly, uh, with uh, Joey, and with Vinny, 
is seducing people of the opposite sex. Um, that's their area of expertise. That's why they're not dumb. They're innocent. They're thinking at a lower level than someone their age should be thinking. And Bull is the, uh, the bully. He's not a sex symbol, but, uh, but he can use his height and strength to uh, kind of intimidate people, which makes him a good bailiff. Well, what subject are you going to write about? What? <laughs> what subject have you decided to do the term paper on? Um, I can think, just give me a sec, I'll think of it. Uh, Does it have anything to do with history? Yeah, oh, oh, the, 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 the great French fry phantom. <laughs> French fry fancy. Yeah, I just heard the news. No potatoes. <laughs> I think I think it happened in, in, in England, the island, someplace where they where they speak English really funny. As opposed to Brooklyn, where we speak it perfectly. Yes. <laughs> what are you talking about, French fry phantom? The phantom, you know, when you can't get nothing to eat, you have a phantom. <laughs> French fry famine? Irish potato famine? Yeah, that's it, that's it. It's, it's the same thing, I just said a little different. Plays on words keep coming up again and again. Uh, now let's take one more look at uh, Charlie Kelly, who they're really on the nose with him at a third grade level. He's actually illiterate, uh, and they play off that a lot. But, again, it's working the English language and his difficulty with it. There's a note! There's a note! Take it, baby. Meet at later bar, night or day, sometime. Charlie. Charlie! Look at that door, dude. See that door right there? One marked pirate. You think a pirate lives in there? I see a door marked private. Is that the, is that the door you're talking about? No, I was talking about... Yep. Yeah. I didn't say... No, did you, you what did you hear? I Let think. me handle this, Frank. It's not Bullbird. No, He's making that, a few good it. points. Yeah, Look, buddy, crap. I know a lot about the law and various other lawyerings. Um, I'm well-educated, well-versed. I know that situations like this, real estate-wise, they're very complex. Actually, they're pretty simple. The forms are all standard, boilerplate. Okay, well, we're all hungry. We're gonna get to our hot plate soon enough, all right? But let's talk about the contract here. Sorry, I forgot. Where did you go to law school again? Uh, well, I could ask you that very same I question. I went to Harvard. Uh? Mm -hmm. How about you? Where? Yeah. I'm pleading the fifth, sir. Uh -huh. I'd advise that you do that. And I'll take that advice into cooperation, all right? Ugh. Now, let's say you and I go toe-to-toe -to -toe on bird law and see who comes out the victor. You know, I don't think I'm going to do anything um, close to that, and I can see clearly you know nothing about the law. It seems like you have a tenuous grasp on the English language in general. Okay, well, filibuster. Do you, do you know what that word means? Yep. Yeah, what's that mean? One final and very important uh, element to these characters is they don't have a jaded bone in their body. Once you jade them, the, the character disappears, the innocence disappears. So they don't have a sarcastic and typically cynical retort to anything uh, that is thrown at them. Most of the time, they, they get angry. Um, like anybody else, they're human. But uh, they tend to take a lot of the abuse that comes their way, especially about their... Um, about their uh, intellect. Uh, I will say, yeah, Kelly Bundy, you do see her um, and her brother going at each other, but that's basic. Again, if they're at an eight-year-old level, that's what they're going to do. So uh, anyone older, they tend to sit back and, uh, and just, uh, you know, let it roll off their shoulder. I mean, this is why you can get away with this so many times on Rosen Island. Your heart's in the right place, Rose, but I don't know where the hell your brain is. <laughs> but you see what we have to put up with. She's an airhead. Oh, yeah, well, you're a barbell. That's a dumbbell, you twit. <laughs> oh, Rose. Dear sweet single-digit IQ Rose. So Excuse me, Rose Blanche. <laughs> could I see the uh, rule book? Thank you. <laughs> Rose, would you... Please hand me my grade book. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> now the metro section. Did oh. she and the girls? <laughs> Rose, hand me that newspaper. 
No, you're going to hit me with it. <laughs> no, I won't. You promise? I promise. Poor, sweet, single-digit IQ rose. <laughs> so there you have it. You must remember that in any sitcom, all the characters are in some way immature. But these characters are the most um, outlandishly so, if you will, uh, or obviously so. Uh, you have your foreign, you have your diminished, and you have your childlike. And that gives you the innocent, not dumb characters. Again, when Rose got mad, she said, well, you're a barbell. <laughs> Again, you can play off of even when she's angry, she's still not as good at this anger and cynicism. So uh, just have fun writing these characters because they are so fun. And you can create an entire new world that uh, the audience never knew about um, because these characters are foreign to us. But, well, if you enjoyed this video, please click the thumbs up button uh, below. Tell me any other videos you'd like to see. Subscribe to the channel. That'll help my algorithm. And, uh, well, until next time, keep on laughing. There's no business like show business like no business I know. Everything about it is appealing. Everything the traffic will allow. Nowhere can you get that special feeling than when you're stealing that extra bow.